Some time ago, I created a video on the step chart together with Bart Titular's input. I'm going to put the link to it in the descriptions in case you missed it. Now, after some time, I got an email from Mahdi on YouTube who wrote this. If you're curious to find out how a step chart can work with arrow bars, stay tuned. After I saw Mahdi's email, I thought, that's a great idea. Now, I had initially looked into arrow bars, but I stopped because I ran into a problem with the X arrow bars for the horizontal lines before I even got to the Y ones for the vertical ones. So I thought it's probably not going to work for the Y ones either. But when I take a look at Mahdi's solution, I realized it actually works great for the vertical lines. So there was only one challenge to overcome, and that was to find a way to make the horizontal arrow bars dynamic, since we are going to have days at irregular intervals. And we had to do this without running into problems for the last date on this table, and still have the table properly update our chart when new data gets added to this. So let's see the final solution. This is our data set. The first thing I'm going to do is to convert it into an official Excel table. So just click anywhere inside and press Ctrl T. I'm just going to go with OK here. First thing, I'm going to revert to my own formatting by clearing the table formatting here. And second thing is I'm going to give it my own name. So I'm going to call it PR table. Now first, let's just insert a scatter plot and then let's see how we can use the arrow bar technique here. So with this data set highlighted, let's go to insert to the chart side and let's insert a scatter plot. Let me just remove the grid lines. We know that we can't just activate the lines that connect these points together because that's going to give us the wrong visualization. Like for this point to this point, it's going to look like that the price slowly dropped to here. But in fact, it didn't because the price stayed this amount. What was that date? On the 1st of February until the 20th of February, the price stayed at 47. And then right on the 20th of February, it dropped to 30. So we need the line to go from here and then all the way down and not from here to here like this. This is where the arrow bars can come in handy. I personally use arrow bars quite a lot in the visualizations because it kind of gives you another dimension of control when it comes to manipulating your data series. Now, if you don't know what arrow bars are, if you've never used it, basically their main purpose is when you do statistical analysis, you can visually show the range of error that's associated with your analysis. So if I select the series and I activate the arrow bars, you can see how they look like this. You have the option of showing the horizontal arrow bar, so the range of error based on the horizontal axis, and the vertical arrow bar. Now we're not going to be using this for their statistical purpose, we're actually going to be using this to give us the right visualization for our step chart. Now the good thing with these arrow bars is that you can control their length and their values. So if I just click on the horizontal arrow bars and either right mouse click to format them or double click them or use the shortcut key control one, we come to our arrow bar options here. So we have the ability to choose their direction, to choose their style. And the best part is we can define the amount and the amount is their length. Right, so let's just quickly take a look at the length here. Right now, it's just some standard length that was given to us, but we can't go with the standard length, right? Because it's, this is not going to connect this point to this point. We need this line to go all the way here and then all the way up. So what we could do is to use the custom. So let's just go back here. On the bottom, you can give your own values to it right here. So you can actually reference this to a range on which you previously have done your calculation. So that's what's going to work for us in this case. So first off, let's just decide on the direction of this horizontal arrow bars. Which of these options do you think is going to work for the step charts? The plus, right? Because we're always going in this way. 
the end style that's an easy one I don't want a cap the cap is that little tiny line that you see on the bottom when you select no cap you remove that line so now we're only manipulating the horizontal arrow bars right after that we're going to get to the vertical ones now to switch between them you can either select them from here but sometimes they might be very small might be very difficult to select so you can always select them from up here here you can see all the elements that are inside your chart so if I want to move on to Y I can select Y from here if I want to go back to X I select this if I want to go back to my original series I select the series here it's a good way of changing your selection from here instead of trying to click on the right series okay so now let's define the length of the X arrow bars how could I get them to be as long as my other point here well that number that difference is the difference between my dates here right so that's all I need actually I'm just going to add that here and call this X error now immediately my table is going to expand and my chart is going to add this new series to it but I don't want that because that's not a separate series on the chart these arrow bars belong to my original series so first thing I'm going to do is to kick it out of my chart I'm going to go to select data click on the X error and remove it from the chart now let's do our calculation we said that's the difference between the next date and the current date okay so these are in dates let's just highlight the area and let's change that number formatting to general just so we see the number of days between them so these look good except the last one right because the problem is we have nothing on the next date so how do we overcome this in a dynamic way so that we always get these numbers except for the last row inside the table there we want to have zero because for that last point we want to stop here we don't want to have any line going this way one formula we can use here is to count the number of rows the table has and then to check which row we're on if we happen to be on the last row of the table we could bring in our exception and we could say put a zero otherwise it should do this calculation so let's add that in if rows of our tables I'm just going to highlight this first column here equals the current row that we're on so just row this one the date one now there is always going to be a difference here because my table doesn't start from the top here right so I need to adjust for that and I'm going to say minus the row of my header okay so that should give me the right number I'm just going to put this part in brackets so that means if this condition is true which means if I'm on the last row then it should give me zero otherwise it should calculate the difference and that looks good so let's just double check here I'm going to click on that last one and highlight this part of the formula and press F9 we see it's row 8 and how many rows does this table have let's press F9 8 right so 8 equals 8 that's why it gives me the 0 now that we have our calculation let's make the length of these X error bars equal to these numbers so I just clicked on it I'm on the horizontal error bar here let's go to custom for the positive error value I'm going to select this one right here and say OK and I get my lines and I don't get a line for the last one and the length of the line looks great because they're all different and they're all as long as the next date okay so now let's try to figure out the Y error bars for the first one I don't need any Y error bar for the second one I need it to go down and for the third one I need it to go up then for this one I need it to go down so what type of calculation do I need for that well that's just the difference between my two points so basically if I'm right here that difference is the difference in price between the previous one and the current one right that's my difference 
The only thing is that I get a problem for the first line because I have text here, right? So here I could also make an exception. If the result of this is an error, give me a zero. Okay, and that takes care of that. Now I'm just gonna take away the euro formatting here because we're just interested in the numbers. And that should be the distance between this one and this one. So that's minus, that looks good. So let's test it out. Let's activate the Y arrow bars. If you can click on it, click on it from here. Otherwise just activate your chart and select the Y arrow bars from here. Let's go to the main options up here. Which one do we need to go with? We can go with the plus here as well. We don't need a cap and we're going to go with custom again. And for the positive error values, we're going to select this and go with OK. And that's our step chart. Everything in one place in one table. Now the rest of this tutorial is just to optimize the data labels for it. Because if I activate the data labels as they are right now, they're not going to be placed properly, right? Even if I select above, I'm going to be covering the line from the ones on the bottom. If I select below, it's the other way around. So it would be nice to put the labels on top, up here, and on the bottom down here. This means that we can work with two additional series here. One series is only going to plot the points that are on top, and the other series is going to plot the points that are on the bottom. Okay, so let's start with the positive series first. I'm going to say this is for positive labels and this one is going to be for negative labels. The formula here is very simple. If the y error number is less than or equal to zero, I want to show the price. Otherwise, I want to show nothing. Okay, let's just go with nothing to begin with. Okay, so that should show numbers for this one, this one, which it does, and the last one is also positive, and these ones are also positive. Okay, so that looks good. Let's just copy this and paste it for the negative one and just change this to the other sign. So if it's greater than zero, then we want to see this, and that only shows the number for these three ones. Okay, so all we have to do is to bring these two series in here. Let's right mouse click select data, add a new series. Series name is positive labels. Always give your series a label so that you can find it in the drop down here. Our series x-axis, that's our dates. The y-axis, that's our positive labels here. Let's add the negative ones as well. Now notice what's happening in the background here. We get these points here, but we also get a lot of points on our axis. These are the empty stuff in here. Because in the formula, when we say nothing, nothing translates to a zero for our chart. And it plots a zero. We don't want that. So instead of nothing, what we can do is to write NA. It's an error function that's actually going to generate an error here, and these errors are not going to get plotted. So that's kind of a way of hiding your zeros. We're going to do the same for this one as well. So don't forget the NA function for these type of purposes in charts. Now it looks great. We have even two different colors here. For the top series, I'm just going to click on it, right mouse click, add data labels, activate the labels, and let's add them above. Now we want them to be in euros, right? So we can change the formatting of the cell here, but I'd also like to add in the date as well. The date is on the X value, so I'm gonna put a tick mark here. I'm gonna take away these show leader lines. And for the separator here, I don't want the comma, I actually want a new line. So I'm gonna select that from the dropdown. Now let's just change the formatting of these, both the positive and the negative, to the accounting formatting. I'm just going to highlight 
that range behind a table as well. And let's go with accounting. Okay, so that looks really nice. And the same thing for the negative labels. Right mouse click, add data labels. We're gonna put these on the bottom. I'm gonna add in the X value and put these on a new line. Now the good thing about having two separate series for this is that you can also use a different color. So for the negative ones, I can change their font color to this red here. And I can also change the color of these points. But you can also hide these markers. So let's say for the positive ones, I actually don't wanna see those points. I just have to click on them, go to format, for shape fill, select no fill, and for shape outline, select no outline. Now what it's done is that it's hidden my markers for these ones, but it's showing the markers for my original series, right? So if I go and select my series from here, which is the price series, I can do the same for that. I can take away the shape fill and I can take away the shape outline. So I just get a smooth line here. You can do the same thing for the bottom ones as well, or if you'd like to highlight the price drops, you could actually decide to keep that marker in there and just format it a bit differently. For the marker options, I can select a white color for the border. And for the fill color, I can change that to a red color and also make my marker a bit smaller under marker options. So let's just change that to number three. Okay, now we're pretty much done with the step chart because we have the date and the value in here. I can actually remove both axes. I'm just gonna add a title to this. Now to make this stand out a bit more, what I can also do is to change the thickness of the lines here. To do that, you can change the thickness of the error lines. So under the error bar options, for the fill and line, that's the default. I can change the color to, let's say a lighter gray, and I can make it thicker. I'm just gonna go with two here. So that takes care of the vertical error lines, and I can apply the same formatting to the horizontal error lines. And I'm gonna remove the outline of my chart. Let's do a final testing. Increase the price to 55, it jumps to 55. Decrease to 30, it falls to 30. So that's another version of creating the step chart. It just uses one table and the error bar technique. I have to say, this is actually quite simple to set up once you know how. Many thanks to Mahdi for coming up with such a great idea and actually sharing it with us. A thank you also to Bart for sharing the original idea. Now this way, if you ever need to create a step chart, you just have to pick the one that works best for you. As usual, if you like this video, I'm gonna be very happy if you gave it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you like to receive updates when new videos come out.